everybody, welcome back to Cat's Book Night. Today is Monday, March 19th. I don't really have a really good reason why I'm posting this this late. Um, this is my weekly wrap-up video. I did do a 24 and 48 hour book readathon challenge over the weekend. Yesterday, it ended yesterday at 6 o'clock. I did not want to look at any more books. I also didn't want to tell you guys what I'd read, what I'd gotten through, what I hadn't. And then this morning I tried to rush through this video, forgot a few things, and just didn't post it. So this is me redoing this video for you guys because, you know, perfectionist at heart. So, I'm actually going to work backwards this, this week because I do have, I don't have any new books. Well, take that back. I do have new books. I also have return to books that... I kind of want to talk about it. So, returned books this week because I wasn't going to read them as soon as I can get to the pictures. Dumpling by Julie Murphy. I think it's the same narrator that narrates If I Was Your Girl. I like the narration, but I'm not paying att attention enough to this story. So I will probably pick up the physical copy when I get home and read it that way. Um, I had gotten the audio version of Homegoing. I returned it. Not going to have the time to read it. And it was due in six days. And just, I'll pick it up later. And then, I told you guys about this one last week. Uh, the Dark Tower, The Gunslinger. Wasn't liking the narration, didn't particularly care for the storyline, so I returned that one too. And those are the returned audiobooks this week. Um, the new audiobooks this week were actually slightly surprising, to me anyway. So, Good Omens by Terry Pratchett, Pratchett and Neil Gaiman finally came in. Then I picked up Carol by Patricia Highsmith. I am loving this story. This story is fantastic. I didn't think I was going to like it so much. And then uh, How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh. A uh, famous YouTuber. A six and a half hour audiobook. And it's narrated by her. So it should be pretty good. A lot of people seem to like it. So it was available and I picked it up. I also picked up... Actually, let me say this one for next week, because I picked this one up today, so technically it's this weekend's weekly wrap-up. So, those are the new, the new books. Um, Carol, I'm currently reading, like I've already stated. I'm also currently listening to Boundary Born by Melissa Olson. This is the third book in the Boundary Witch series. I, it's actually a trilogy. So, the third book, third and final book in this set Melissa Olsen has a lot of trilogies. I currently think she's working on her... She just finished her fourth one. That I... I think it's her fourth one. It may just be her third one, but she she writes a lot. And they're all on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription and you want to check out something new, definitely recommend her. Um, also currently reading is The Shambling Guide to New York City by Mer Lafferty. Highly recommend Mer Lafferty if you like audiobooks and podcasts. She has an entire series on Podbean, and I want to say it's still on iTunes. About It's a five-book series called Heaven. Heaven's the first book in the series. It's very I find it very well written. The narration is really good on it, too. And so when she actually came out with physical books... I immediately at the bookstore picking it up. So I'm currently on page 115, 110. So this book is about Zoe, who goes, she is from New York, went to Raleigh, got herself in a bit of a mess. Um, typical young woman. Not typical young woman, let me rephrase that. Um, naive young woman. She sleep, sleeps with her boss and then things ensue and then she's back in New York looking for a new job and she's in a bookstore of all places and she sees an ad for a writer, travel guide writer. And the, 
person who's posting the flyers is like, you don't want to apply for that job. No, don't, don't even bother. You're not the type of person we're looking for. She's like, how do you know? You, you have no idea who I am. And then it's a story about her writing for the company after going through everything and finding out that there is more than just humans living in New York. I really like this series. Um, right now it's just a duology. I don't know if she has plans to come out with a sequel novel. I kind of wish she would because The Ghost Train in New Orleans was really, really good and left a lot of things unanswered. So I really hope she comes out with another one. But those are my currently reading books. Um, finished. <laughs> so the books that I finished this week, the two audiobooks, Boundary Lines by Melissa Olson, book two in that series, um, focuses on Lex and Lex Luthor, who's the main character, because it's told from pers first person's perspective. I will remember how to talk one of these days, guys. Um, it's a good series. Like I said earlier when I said what I'm currently listening to is the third book in that series. I haven't read the third book, so it will be interesting to see how she finishes the trilogy out. Um, I'm hoping there's some answer questions that come with it, but I'm not entirely sure. So hoping to finish that this week. Um, also finished the audio book of Down Among the Sticks and Bones. This came through Overdrive a lot faster than, than I thought it would. And it was a great break from physical books this weekend. I probably would have finished The Shambling Guide to New York City had I not listened to Down Among the Six and Bones. But I'll, I'll get to why I needed this book this weekend. Um, non-24 hour non-48 hour books this week. Etched in Bone, which is the fifth book in the other series, which is the final book that focuses on Megan Simon and Lakeside, and then Lake Silence by Ann Bishop. Um, this just came out this month. It was a fantastic read. It almost reads like a standalone. So you don't have to read any of the other novels in the other series to pick this one up and to know what's going on. So I really like this book. Um... I don't know if she's going to come out with a seventh one. I'm fingers crossed because I really enjoyed it. So I hope she continues. Um, other The other non-48 hour book was Beastly by Alex Flynn. I picked this up at Powell's um, last weekend and I hadn't read it in a while. So I picked it up out of the stack that I was going to read this weekend and just read through it at lunchtime. So, outside of Down Among the Sticks and Bones this weekend, I got through. I hate these books. I hate them. I just, the writing style wasn't, like, I have grown past the point of action stories revolving around sex. Which I think is why I can't read a lot of Sherilyn Kenyon stuff anymore. Because I want a book that is plot driven, does not revolve around sex, doesn't necessarily have the alpha male stereotype to it, which I think is why I'm enjoying Carol so much. It's because it doesn't have that dominant male perspective, oh, you're new in town, let me make a claim on you, everything like that. So I think that trope has, I've moved past that. Red, Crimson, and Scarlet. This is Dead World Trilogy. She doesn't have any more in, these, in this series, which I'm thankful for because I'm not reading them. So when I go back to Powell's here in a few, few weeks, I think I might go back beginning of May. I'm not sure. These are going with me and being on hold. So, after reading that junk, I call it junk because it sucked. To me, it sucked. Why do I have to read about sex every single chapter? And why do I have to have characters that start up as really strong people 
And then all of a sudden you go from the first book where she's a strong character to the second book where she's a whiny brat. Brat is the only word because I don't want to say the actual word that I want to say. But why? Why do you have to have that female character? Why can't she just say, start off strong, doesn't need a person, doesn't need a male counterpart, um, fights the bad guys, wins the day with help from the guy or from her group of friends without having sex? Where do we go wrong with that? Sorry for the rant. I'm actually not sorry for the rant because. Yeah. So, thankfully, I moved on to a fantastic read, The Boston Girl by Anita Daymont. This is about a young Jewish woman who, it's her 80, after her 85th birthday in 1985. She's born in 1900. And you find that out through her story of her family and in an interview format where she's talking to her granddaughter. And it was very well written, very well presented. I loved the historical facts in it. I loved the setup of the story, and I loved the way that she did this, did her story. So if you're into historical fiction, definitely check this out, please. And if you do read it, please let me know what you think about it. Um, the last book that I finished this week that I'll talk about is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. Again, um... I love Adam's work. Adam is a fantastic author. This was his debut novel. It plays upon what if you could forget memories. You gotta go through a procedure and you go through a chain of events with Aaron. And Aaron comes come to find out has you don't realize it until most of the way through the book when an accident happens that he went through the procedure. Not that he was thinking about it, because he does think about it, but that he's gone through the procedure and now he's dealing with side effects. The last chapter, last couple chapters, he's dealing with the side effects of his decision. I'm not saying that the decision was correct. And it, the more happy than not, does sort of delve into if gay people were given this sort of memory suppressant treatment, would we still be gay? And I like that Adam talked about that. I like that he talked about suicide and, you know, talks about heavy topics. Um, and they both die at the end you've got these two guys who get a phone call and they spend the day together and they die. You know that that's what's going to happen to the both of them, but you don't know when, you don't know how, you don't know why, and um, and History is All You Left Me, which there is a couple pages of History is All You Left Me in this one. You've got Mateo who has lost his first boyfriend and he does some really stupid stuff but I mean yeah so <laughs> I don't remember where I was going with that other than Adam writes really good books and he's not afraid to hit the heavy stuff he's not afraid to touch on death coming out what it's like to come out to a group of friends that aren't as accepting what it's like to come out to a parent or a sibling where they're not going to understand. They may call you a freak and to them they're joking, but to you, if you take it to heart in a non-joking tone, especially if you've just come out and you're not sure about yourself, he's not afraid to talk about it. And that's why I like his, I really love his books and I'm glad I picked that one up this weekend because after reading this very, very well deserved and needed break from. So, with that, that is my weekly wrap up video for this week. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and are off to a great start this week. Um, today is International Reading Day, Read to Me Day.
I actually think it's the week. But, um, yeah, find somebody to read to. If you've got a kid, pick up a book and read to them. E even if it's your favorite book, um, especially if it's Harry Potter. It is Hogwarts House Pride Week on top of that. So I'm going to go watch my people read Harry Potter. So, yeah. Have a great night, guys. Bye.